drive in the snow. So <laughs> yeah. we are getting we are getting whacked as well here. I'm just trying to get my other screen up. So I'll know if like I could get into my website because I forget a lot of the things I do. I'm old, you know. <laughs> no, I can sure blame it on that, Malia. <laughs> Terry, anytime you're ready. Three, two. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Brian Sebastian's Movie Reviews and More. Today, we're going to brighten your day with who was just announced by Hollywood Digest magazine, the most beautiful woman in the world. And because of her beauty, you're also going to become familiar with this wonderful icon, at the air, at various airports because she's just been named the face of airport television streaming services. So if her magnetic million dollar smile and her sparkling turquoise blue eyes don't calm your flying fears, you can hear her motivated messages of hope and inspiration. Uh, Our guest today, Kagroon Shona. I'm sorry. This is my grandson, Dean, and I homeschool him every day of the week. Just, did you say hello? See, she's a magnet for innocence and everything good. You're on TV right now, so why don't you go and find something? It's okay. Bye-bye. It's okay. It's okay. The TV turned Mr. Brent all by himself. They turned it all by Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Something like you know, I was I was telling Sebastian that um, Brian that uh, this is what I do. You know, I um, amongst other things that I do, I do uh, the homeschooling uh, during COVID for my uh, my for my grandson. Yes, and for our audience, Kedrosha Una, everything she does, she does to do to inspire, to add value to people's lives. Um, she lives by the motto, be good, be nice, and help others, for which you just witnessed. <laughs> yes, I'm Kendra trying to find, set, set this to airport mode so nobody can call me. <laughs> Here you go. Okay. I'm all yours at least for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Kat Rosha, she's, um, she's also a pioneer and she's succeeded at many firsts. She is actually, for all of her great assets and um, um, integrity, she is a real life superhero. Um, I'm wearing her colors <laughs> as homage to Kat Rosha's superhero. Um, she has created many successful uh, movies, books, and uh my very first Wall of Fame inductee behind me was this, and this is Kedrosha's Celebrity Ghost Hunter comic yeah, series, which will be made into a movie soon. So everyone, welcome to the show, the beautiful, the lovely Kedrosha. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you, you girls both look beautiful today. I love the colors. I, I know, my, my earrings are the colors of your, of the color of your shirt. Well, this is your superhero outfit colors. So yeah, <laughs> I love blue, turquoise, anything like that. Yeah. yeah um, Kat Rosha, today here at Movie Reviews and More, uh, Brian, he's our expert on movies. And I was reading about you and, and you've put out many award-winning successful movies as a director, producer, writer, actress. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you tell us and about a movie that won many awards called Silent Times? There's there's some great history behind that one. Silent Times is a movie that uh, was the first of its kind for over 80 years. It was a silent film. But not only was it a silent film, it was done in the exact format silent films are were done in back then. And it, we had to study, uh, you know, makeup, clothing, um, gesturing and, and things. And I didn't realize that you had to move in slow motion. And then this film speeds you up. So we all had a lesson in um, how to execute uh, what we were doing so that we would be able to, um, you know, film the movie. Um, like Charlie Chaplin, you see him walking with a cane and all this stuff like that. 
what people didn't realize he was really going slow with that cane and then everything sped up. So we did things in slow motion and then they sped it up and we were featured in Broadway World Magazine and we, we received so many awards. And I'm trying to remember uh, the special award that I like is a Bermuda Film Festival. And that is a particular festival that if you um, get into it and let's say you win it, you already get to go to the Academy Awards. It was a qualifying fist, uh, film festival for the Ca Academy Awards. Well, we didn't qualify for that, but we got noticed and we got accepted. Doesn't mean we're part of the Academy Awards, but it was one step closer that uh, we've ever been. So that film alone won quite a few awards. Uh, well, with everybody looking for things to watch, are we able to find that on Netflix or where can we source that? Well, you, what we're doing right now with Silent Times is it's still making its way as, you know, as the film producer and other film producers, they, they know this too, is it makes its way through uh, getting acclaim and awards through uh, film festivals. And at that point, when you get so many, then your distribution and the money coming, to you can get more for the distribution of the film, like on Hulu or Netflix or whatever. It's kind of driven by um, how good the film is, how many awards you have, like that. So we're just waiting for, I don't know how many more, uh, probably not that many before we start the distribution on that and a few other films. And that film festival was actually really, really good. Uh, my friend Carol Marshall or Carol Stone Marshall was the PR person on that, and it was, and it was an honor. Okay, cool. That. Uh, so yeah. yeah, and what people don't realize, uh, going back to the '30s, uh, whether it was Carl Lemley from the Lem, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Lemley family, which is the oldest movie chain in life, still dealing with Bob and Greg, the heirs of that in Los Angeles, is that the women directors were some of the best directors at the time, also the best editors. You think as uh, right, right. His, his, his editor is a woman uh, editor. She's one of the best in the world, always has been. And right. need to know that more. Women don't get a lot of credit with stuff when I, I always want to make sure that mm -hmm. out. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, women, as far as in comic books and other things that I've done, don't get a lot of credit. And that's why I'm a believer of I give credit where credit is due. If you don't give it to me, I'm going to take it from you. And I do. And so I do it with a smile and I love it. <laughs> well, well, Kat Rosa, she's got very in, in really great instincts and business sense. Um, I'm not sure if many of you know, but our superhero, she was also a cop in the police force at one time. Um, yes, I was. So again, there you go with helping people. <laughs> but um, many of you are probably most familiar with Kat Rosa because they call her the queen of the paranormal. Yes, I trademarked that many years ago. And even before I trademarked it, I was using the name Cece Carol, because Cece is easy to pronounce in, instead of like Karosha. So I did uh, over 85 paranormal uh, television shows. I worked with the Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International, every ghost show out there. And um, we did events together and whatnot. And, um, you know, I used uh when i did an event you know cc uh, the huntress was the name of the show i i played cc and it was kind of like a one-man band with my um my son filming me uh doing these um almost daredevil things like rappelling down into a well 30 40 feet um i mean a quarry and then hand climbing into a well about 30 to 50 feet and, um, and then back up again. So I would do more physical things like that, but then again, girls weren't noticed. And so uh, I did use uh, for the event, Cece the Huntress is queen of the paranormal. And then when I felt I wasn't really getting recognized, uh, you can only sing uh, in the church choir for so long because you're not going to get out the door. I decided to take a step into uh, more of a national, international realm and use my real name, Karosha Ona Carol, and uh, trademark Queen of the Paranormal. And it was the best move I ever did because I do comic cons everywhere. Um, I do appearances and pop culture events and and just everything now. Uh, I don't do the paranormal and comic con 
the paracons anymore. And I, I think they're great. I think they're great for the local community to come in and learn things and get to know people if they want their house, you know, rid of ghosts or uh, you know investigated uh, the, these are great uh, tools that you can use you can go to these events but as far as what i wanted to do and speak to the general public again if i do a power con i'm kind of like you know talking to everybody that knows what's going on anyways so it was kind of like defeating the purpose so i just stuck to the larger events and i haven't been uh haven't looked back one day with that well, and when I look at, at your um, photos, you, you seem to be a magnet at those events. Everybody wants to get a photo with you. And <laughs> and the, what's most beautiful about you is you look genuinely happy to be with those people, you know, and uh, no, I've never been to one and you just explained why it would be nice to go to one. So, but yeah. this lady, she, um, she's a, a lot of people want their photo with her, but you know, yeah. any movie directors and, and producers out there, there's so much within this lady. Like she's also Brian, a very successful award-winning horse lady, Jim Cano winner. So she's also performed in many, you know, movies with horses in them. And um, right. I wanted and to also, ask and also just being on set to be a horsewoman um, to make sure that the horses are taken care of, uh, animals are treated nice, you know. And uh, I do that. Uh, I just go people know me and uh, they let me go and kind of like tag around make sure everything's okay you don't get credit for that though <laughs> no but it's wonderful and i know brian has an affection for horses and i was curious Bravo. when i was reading about you if if horses is one of your avenues for um you know therapy downside you know um relaxing is that one of your um methods to perhaps you know relaxing or just resetting um I, I, I generally love the animals. Um, animals that big, um, I have training as far as uh, veterinary training at Tufts University. I trained um, as a vet and I also trained as a vet um, assistant going out with a doctor in North Andover, a veterinarian. And I was very young <coughs> and he would take me with him so we could like put on the gloves and feel the baby cows, you know, the uterus and stuff and give shots and uh, find out where the pain is. Animals can't tell you where the pain is, but you can feel it if you're good at it because pain gives off energy and energy can be heat in a particular area. Like with a horse, uh, I can feel exactly where it is. And then all of a sudden we start wrapping the opposite leg and the people are like, well, why are you doing that? It's just like, oh yeah, we'll get to that. We're going to, we're going to wrap that one. But we wrap the other one because there's an enormous amount of strain on the leg that um, is being to help the sore leg. So chances are you got a horse that's lame, you're treating it. You got to wrap that other leg because you'll have two lame legs at that point. And, um, but I do feel being around animals, I love it. Um, that's why I do cats and dogs now. Um, well, I can't have like a horse in my yard, it's small. <laughs> I do visit different farms and things still. Yeah, it's relaxing. You know, Sherry, she doesn't remember, I actually met you when you were doing, um, they would call it consulting for Television Critics Association for the new shows coming out for a ghost hunter and the other things like that, the paranormal shows. And mm -hmm. we always knew they were going to do well. And, and then when they start to be aired, they did extremely well. That audience is always there. Most people mm -hmm. have felt negative energy, or sometimes positive energy. And it's very interesting. And I've always been attracted to that because I actually have a shaman. And I did learn a lot from the horses because horses will tell you, but also they're very intuitive, especially if you have uh, kids, um, that are artistic. I learned a lot right. of watching problem horses. And you put all that stuff together and you will learn a lot of being in tune with Mother Earth, uh, being more in tune and, and with women of what they need to have and how us men can really learn from them, which is why I'm always learning from women. Mm -hmm. I think I've known enough from women. You still will never learn enough. Uh, it's always an aspect of things. 
Well, you, you know, they, they teach us so much by just watching them. And if you're not just in tune, but let's say your body's sensitive, you can feel them underneath like tensing up or twitching or something. And um, let's say I have been on um, looking for people that have been lost in the woods, uh, Alzheimer's and uh, people patients and they just wander off so and they're near trails so uh when i did have the horses I'd, I'd get on and go but what i would be looking for is not so much the person as watching the nostrils pick up a scent that is just not familiar it could be because the person has a medication their breath is funny uh, from cancer it could be anything but you watch those nostrils and they're smelling something different and then the ears are going and you're like okay now they're picking up something it could be somebody walking that we can't hear but they can and so you have to really be in tuned and watch the animal and watch the nostrils watch the ears feel the tensing and let them tell you where the person is and a lot of people um don't do that they forget that the animal really is that valuable they may want to rely on their own senses by oh i get a feeling it's over here okay that's cool uh, I'm relying on the animal because the ears are moving. And um, a lot of other people would look at the trail. Um, they're good trail readers. And that's good too. Uh, I'm a trail reader as well. I can tell, you know, when the leaves are this way or the, the grass is that way or a branch went that way. You can usually tell if, uh, you know, uh, a footprint or a horse or anything has been there um, and about approximate time frame of where they were. Then you call for somebody saying, hey, we got something over here and um, it's viable because it's actual evidence. Instead of just saying, hey, my horse's nose is going me, me, me. <laughs> so um, yeah, I love horses. Okay, Brosha, how is it that you, are you just instinctly in tune that way? Because it is, it's, a, it's an amazing gift and I, I can't imagine where you would learn something like that. And, and if it is instinct for you, when did you realize you might've been that intuitive? Um, I don't know, I think I was born with it. My uh, grandparents and my grandmother, my babcha, my babcha rogala, it was a babka, it was an old uh, grandmother. Um, all the way through Poland and Russia. I have Abenaki from Newport, Vermont, um, from my other side of the family. And um, you're born into it. And then you think like everybody has this ability to feel, read, sense, or whatever. And then, then you go to junior high and you're like, you're an oddity, literally. And people just kind of shun you because you know, you have the ability to just to look at them and you know exactly what they're saying. You can feel that vibe. You can, whatever, you can tell them things that might happen at home or, or hey, maybe you should do it this way so this don't happen. And they just like think you're, you know, like a freak of nature or something. But um, I just kept, kept with the path. I quelled it for a while and then I just kept with it and kept going. And um, and here I am today, still doing it. Uh, my grandson, it's funny because he likes to go ghost hunting and we do it very mild. And uh, my daughter's scared to death. So that's why she runs social media. <laughs> my sons, uh, yeah, they love it. They just love it. My, uh, my son George was over today and he was just chatting all about... Um, you know, mom, I love being psychic. I love knowing what people are going to say, not going to say. I love avoiding traffic <laughs> like that. So that's cool. I would love it if you could write a, a, a new um, updated version, perhaps remember the Mel Gibson movie, What Women Want, Ooh. right? I know they've done a What Men Want, but I would love to get your um, direction and something like that in a movie because of your instincts. Um, but that would be fun. I mean, maybe I'll be able to talk to some people, you know, at uh, Ubiquity Films and Ascendant Film Studios. And there's a lot of things that I'm doing that I can now actually present in a professional manner to uh, get them uh, seen um, and uh, either accepted, not accepted, work on a little more like that. So the ideas I have now have a home. 
No, I'd like you to talk a little bit more about that because that that really is an admirable um, accolade that you've just been granted by uh, the Ubiquity and Ascendant um, Studios. Um, Kadrosha, she's been um, put as the head of government affairs. Right. And I'm, yes. I'm, 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 yeah, could you explain that to us? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm the VP in charge of government affairs. And it's kind of like a um, scary title, like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to, um, I like to get involved. Um, I love politics, but you'll never find me political. I, I, when I do filming, I've filmed for government officials and presidents for decades now, and I do a really good job. And in the media, when Obama came out this way uh, to New Hampshire to work and to be seen, he contacted, his group contacted me for uh, women in the media, and he knew I'd do a good job, uh, you know, calling uh, media and information. I also, the exact same campaign, I work for Duncan Hunter, same thing with uh, a commercial work. And right now I am part of um, the media production when it comes to um, the candidates down on the, uh, the Senate runoff in Georgia right now. So. Uh, yeah, well, and the essence of that uh, studio is actually more value, positivity, you know, um, integrity. So it's a wonderful studio for you and to be affiliated with. And I'm glad that now I know of them and recognize them because I would definitely like to seek out any of their productions. Yeah, they, they, um, it's they, a gr great team of people. Yeah. They work with the CEO uh, directly. And when he found out my background when it came to uh, government issues, I a uh, lobbyist uh, in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. I've talked to the, in front of the Senate, the Congress. I've worked with a lot of people when it can, when it comes to filming. Um, so I have, I guess I call it kind of an in or an approach. And the whole thing with government affairs when it comes to filming is to be able to give back to the community. And as far as I'm concerned, I can see wonderful tax breaks being given to the production companies as long as there are sustainable employment opportunities for people that are there within the community that you just got the tax break for. To me, that's called giving back to the community. When you have these franchises, let's, you know, we're doing a Vice Squad, Vice Squad LA, Vice Squad Chicago, Vice Squad Boston. One of these different communities, when this show gets picked up, um, it's a television series, what can we do inside that community to make sure that people stay employed? I mean, we've got COVID going on. People are struggling. We've got food lines. We want to be able to give back, but it would be also nice to get a tax break or some kind of compensation or tax credits and things, and then be able to apply that to the community on different, uh, I'm not gonna say social issues, but, but food pantries, animal shelters, and also to make sure that people have a job working on these projects uh, with us uh, for the long haul. And that is my job. And again, it goes back to what I do, uh, sharing positivity and giving back to communities. I do that at Comic-Cons. When I go into a Comic-Con, I give back to animal shelters, food pantries. If you bring me a staple product, what I do is I hook it up with um, a food pantry. I drop it off. And in the meantime, I give you a free picture and autograph if you just bring me something that I can uh, donate in uh, your behalf. No, well, that's the thing, um, Kadrosha. Like everything you do has positive you know, long-term value, you know, as you were just saying, you know, for businesses, it's nice to get a tax break because in a, in a sense, that's a thank you for maintaining your business. You know, I, th I think that's really important that that gets spotlighted for businesses to get a break and, and in turn see it as a value. But um, as you were saying, you know, your smile and everything and I think, you know, occasionally Brian will say I'm his good luck charm, and I think it has a lot to do with that good luck charm in the room with me on the shows. Um, but Kedrosha, what is your favorite holiday? Because I know that you were named one of the queens of Hollywood among Elvira, Queen of Darkness, and Linda Blair from The Exorcist. So yeah. is Halloween your your holiday or other Well, holidays? my holiday, Halloween, so everyone thinks and says, is spent with 
my grandson um, since he came along, and I don't give a damn. I'm sorry. I know we're paranormal, but I'm also grandma first, and that's what I do. Um, I try to take that day um, in that little portion of time for him. So I work like a dog. I had do so many of these quick five-minute interviews, quick you know, 10 minute, you know, shout outs, whatever, or pre-recordings. I'll do five, six a day just to make sure I have that one day off. So everyone associates me because it's queen of the paranormal, a positive energy uh, to Halloween. Personally, I like my favorite holiday. Well, see, I, I equate it with food because I like to eat. So <laughs> I like lamb <I> like <laughs> with the mint jelly and all of this stuff. Uh, that's Easter. So I like that. And on uh, Christmas Eve, I have the pita, um, Spianco pita with the, the spinach, a feta cheese. And then on Christmas Day, I have a roast. Of course, Thanksgiving, we all give thanks. We have a turkey. I'm not fond of turkeys. But I'll have a chicken. Why? I don't, I don't oh, like them. oh, there's something there. <laughs> I, they're okay to give you gas, and I fall asleep. Oh. <laughs> I can't even like this. <laughs> this is my husband with you know the cell camera filming me farting. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh my god, you're so adorable. <laughs> I was going to ask you if the people who've never met you, when you could walk down the street without people's mask on, how did they peg you? I always wanted to know that. Because you have the eyes. You don't you don't look <laughs> up Ukrainian or whatever. Yes! And it's the name. How would they peg you? Because you're not easy to peg. Well, uh, if I have on my Queen of the Paranormal uh, sort of like branding outfit uh, um, at Comic Con that I wear to a Comic Con, um, or I do something in that outfit, like an event, if I walk down the street in that. I haven't found one person that does not know who that woman is because of that particular look. Now, if I if I just wash the makeup off and put my hair in a ponytail, a sweats on, and I go to the store, nobody knows who you are. Um, but the branding, which I work so hard uh, all over the world with, um, doing you know different things, and of course the movies and stuff like that, a lot of people do know that branding. We have a huge Comic Con here, uh, the Granite State Comic Con, and many, many people, and I, I'm, I'm on it. And in fact, I have uh, the, the guy that runs it, I have his son in, in the movie I'm making. <laughs> so we all know each other, it's a community state. So New Hampshire is a small community state, been in the paper a gazillion times in the magazines and stuff, and people come um, and see me at the Granite State Comic Con all the time. The next state down is we have Rhode Island. I've been part of Rhode Island Comic Con for many years. And again, they know you when you're in your branding, but if you're out of that element, they don't know you. Well, if I were, I've never been. So if I were to come and visit you, uh, when do you think in 2021 may it be? And if I came, what do I, what are my essential tools? Obviously a camera. Um, what yeah. do I need to bring with me to get the best um, experience? Well, for ghost hunting? Uh, no, no, sorry, to your Comic Con. Because <clears throat> I'd love to go oh, for the Comic Con. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Um, what you would do is if you go to a Comic Con or if you're hired to be appearing on a Comic Con, I always tell people, look and tell me you do it for nothing. Just get out there. To be seen in the publicity is is. You couldn't pay for that. You 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 couldn't pay for it. Like I said, at the Granite State Comic Con, Rhode Island Comic Con, when I'm in that branding and I walk down the street here in you know, New Hampshire, they all know me because they all know me because they all go to these things and they'll know you too. You've got a particular look, particular branding, a lot of networking, a lot of movie producers go and a lot of people, everyday general people go and that's what you want and that's how you share your brand and that's how you get to know people and stuff like that. I would bring your smile, number one. <laughs> I would bring a positive attitude and I would never feel like a recoil or repelled uh, when someone tries to touch you. I don't like groping, but a big hug and embrace, a kiss on the cheek. Hey, that's all good. Um, that's what I'm known for. And uh, I'm very uh, user-friendly. 
and I don't have people like thrown out only a couple times. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it's nice. I greet everyone with a huge warm hug. I mean, you can be married for as many years as you want, but there are times when God, you forget what a nice warm hug feels like. And oh, especially now. But and, no, I was and just women thinking. need it too. You know, we all to feel yeah. the warmth and an embrace of um, you know that positive energy. So, and I'm not afraid to give it. And I think that's why they uh, line up. You know, for that too. <laughs> Well, I was thinking for any grandparents that don't have an idea for what could they possibly get their grandkids, go to that because I bet we could all wear a cape and we all want to be a superhero for a day at the event. So <laughs> um, I, I don't, you know, I, I do comic books. I do have a children's series coming out with uh, Billy Diamond. We finished the cover, but then of course COVID set in. So we're all kind of like stalled with different projects. But these uh, books, and, and if people that don't know who uh, Billy Diamond is, please Google and look him up. He was a puppeteer for Jim Hansen and the Muppets and a wonderful gentleman. And um, he really made that show fly. And his artwork is on the cover and I'm doing a form of Fumetti is called. And it was originally, um, back in the 30s and 40s, where they would take pictures and use pictures as comics. So we're gonna have a mixture of Fumetti and uh, Billy Diamond for the children's books. And the books are easy. They're hard hitting subjects in a palatable manner with a positive outcome. And that's how we're uh, writing them from grade, I would say K to two, kindergarten to second grade. <laughs> Um, Kat Vosha, when I was doing my homework on you, you were one of the most exciting people that I've researched because every time I saw, I'm like, you are a superhero because my goodness, I kept discovering these fun little items about you that, <laughs> you know what I think is in your future? I think a board game because you Ooh. have done everything and everything. And um, Brian, I'm not sure if you know, but I stumbled across um, Kat Vosha. She was in Eric Heiss's History of Pantyhose. I want to see that. Oh, oh my God. That's, you know what? We had so much fun shooting that with a pantyhose thing. <laughs> so crazy. He kept coming back and he said, I just filmed that star, but and she's like, I don't know, can, can, can you lift up your skirt and show me your pantyhose again? <laughs> no, but it sounds like I pop you in the nose. <laughs> but for him, I said, sure. So we were doing different poses that he needed for the book. And he's a great guy. And I hope the history of pantyhose comes out real soon. I know a lot of people, including myself, um, just just want to see this. And it goes all the way back to probably the 14th century. Uh, oh, wow. It's all way back. And then all, uh, you know, the evolution of wearing hosiery all the way up to modern day. So uh, Well, and it had a role in the war. But I can remember seeing um, the history of the bikini, the history of the bra. And then I yes. thought, oh, the history of the pantyhose. Um, yes. But Katagosha, I know that we're getting close to the end but um some of your photos that i've seen you know then you've sat and had your photo taken with some people that are just so happy to be taking their photo with you that i wonder if um if i say a name and i won't do very many what's the first positive thought in your mind okay so i don't say know a name and what and what do i think as soon as you say your it? first memory of them or your first thought of them um and I remember I messaged you about Eric Roberts. You two will be doing a movie in the future. So what's your first positive thought? Oh, my first positive thought. Beautiful smile and you're all wrong about him. And because um, I was told when I first met him, don't look at him. Don't go over there. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you leave the stars alone uh, and stuff like that. I'm brand new, just, you know, coming out on these things. And um, then there I am. He's at the table all by himself, just hugging and loving and just being a sweetheart. And, and next thing you know, years later, we're doing a movie together. <laughs> so it all works out well. And, no, uh, it's a great photo. I love it. Yeah, he's um, a okay. good guy. And William Shatner, um, I was told the uh, same thing. It was a Comic Con. Don't sit with him. He wants the whole table by himself for lunch. And I'm thinking, really? 
You know when I'm wearing spiked high heels on cement for 12 hours? <laughs> I, I gotta sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ended up, I said, do you mind if I sit here? I was told not to come here and sit with, with any, with you. He says, you've got to be kidding me. They're still doing that to me. He says, sit down. Oh. We sat down, we chatted. We had such a great talk about things. And um, what a wonderful man. What a one, the only thing I didn't do was get a selfie because the phones were left at the door. So I couldn't, I couldn't get that. But um, what a wonderful man. So, yeah. And then I came across um, a really fun photo. Um, do you remember, the audience will remember, I'm sure it was uh, Larry Thomas, the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. And he's got a big smile on his face standing next to you. What's your first thought of him? I was scared. I, yeah. Because um, like, he really does look like the picture. I mean, he <laughs> that look like, no soup, get out of here. <laughs> But I had an in because uh, his wife, Angela, was there and I know her very well. So it was a little different. You know, she was able to drag me over. And um, yeah, so, but I was nervous. I was scared because you never know. You know you <laughs> and some of these, some of the actors, which is re what's really cool, is they become the part. They become the part in front of you. Like, um, <laughs> The guy that played um, Mr. Peterman on Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jay Peterman. <laughs> yeah, Jay Peterman, John O'Hurley. We have been working together for years. Every time we see each other, it's like a homecoming. Wonderful family man and a wife and a little son and just a great person. And um, just hearing the voice and the way he talks and gestures, you swear you're on the Seinfeld set. <laughs> you're just walking around going... <laughs> <laughs> not a bad place to be <laughs> yeah so my last, um, <laughs> okay my last one this would be looks like your sister Lonnie Anderson oh I like Lonnie I met her and then I worked with her like four times after but I met her the very first a comic con I did that's chiller theater and I went over to see if I could get a picture of her and she said yes and from then we, we've just been two peas in a pod she's a very very intelligent woman smart a vocabulary like you wouldn't believe um just a, a wonderful glow and and person to be around um i, I can't say enough you know about her, I, I kind of know like on a personal side but then you know you see the showmanship and stuff like that uh that that's, I think that's, they pay that, to, they pay the ticket to come see that. And, you know, she puts the show on just like, a, just like all of us, you know, uh, me, I'm a little different. I'm, I'm more myself, uh, what you see here, although I put the branding clothes on and stuff like that, but that, that's really what, what you get. That's my personality, um, that is, uh, for sale and on display. But when you come for dinner, or let's say if there was just a surveillance camera in the house, you see the same person. <laughs> and Nothing different. Can you give me a social media link? So we got about 60 seconds. Oh, social media, queenoftheparanormal.com. From there, you can get into everything, including Hollywood Entertainment News, where I host the TV show. And uh, I just have, I have some episodes up there. So if you go to hollywoodentertainmentnews.com and go to the HEN page, you'll be able to see all the cute little clips and episodes from that uh, program. And you don't have to change anything. We like you as you are. You've always been the same. Love you. I like you guys okay. too. I do. And then Sherry, like really you. quickly, give me social media links. Uh, Facebook, Sherry Nelson, uh, Instagram, Twitter, XOXO, Sherry XO. And I want to thank you both for being yourself. Thank you. Both beautiful women, both wearing my colors, which I, I love those colors. <laughs> my spiritual protection yeah. colors. And so with that, I'm Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more. Uh, for corruption for Sherry. If you see someone without a smile, please give them yours because the world needs it because these beautiful women have beautiful smiles and we'll see you next week.